Welcome to Off The Cut, a podcast where we talk about building, making, and answering all of your questions. I'm Eric from Spensley Design Co. And I'm Zach from Zach Builds. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, you can send it to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. You can find both of us on YouTube, Instagram, and unfortunately, because we have to keep up with kids, you can find us on TikTok too. All right, now let's get into the show. You've made it to Off the Cut episode 95. We're up in Toronto and here in Ohio. Today is known as Tuesday, December 19th, 2023, which means the Green Series podcast, the worst podcast available on Apple and Spotify, still sucks. But you know who... (laughs) It's Never. such a good intro. <laughs> I'm always, I always think you're going to put a little flourish on it and do something <laughs> different for every episode, and then you just hit me with the same one, and it still makes me chuckle. I don't know. Well, they still suck. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, but you know, it doesn't suck. KM Tools, baby. KM Tools, and they are a company run by our good buddy. This is where we need that. You ever notice when you ever talk to Jonathan, he always goes like, "Hey, buddy!" Like he always has this like. Yeah. This thing he says, right? We need like that the same ship clip that Shop Sounds has. We need a Katzmosis soundboard, is what we need. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we could go through like a bunch of his videos and cut out some of his his sayings and his isms. Yeah. He's got a lot of them. But, yeah, yeah. But, but one of his isms is that if it's in his store, it's in his shop. That's right. That's right. I like that transition. That was really good. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, that was smart. Uh, that's because Katzmo or KM Tools is a company for woodworkers by woodworkers. Mm-hmm. So everything you buy on there is going to be high quality. It's either made by Jonathan and his team or mm-hmm. it's a super good value and he bets everything. That's right. That's and poor. a portion of every sale goes to the Katz Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. You bet it does. So that's, right. that's awesome. And because Jonathan doesn't just want to pay us, he also wants to pay you guys. That's right. Every single month, we're giving away a fifty dollar. Well, he is giving away a fifty dollar <laughs> gift card to Cam Tools. All you have to do to enter to win that is sign up on Patreon, and you're automatically entered. Nothing else. That's you right. just get the gift card. Yeah, well, and all the other first. Patreon perks. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that stuff's all kind of BS compared to a gift card. Let's be real. That's just yeah. like more time with you and I. <laughs> Who right. wants? I that? mean, no one, no one really wants to listen to the hour long after show or get <laughs> access to the Discord or hang mm-hmm. out with us tonight on yeah, our live night. group video chat. Yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. But mm-hmm. huge thanks to Jonathan for sponsoring the show, and uh, let's get right into it. All righty, let's so, do it. So I guess the first thing we should talk about for everybody on the live stream tonight, tonight is our monthly uh, group video hangout where we all get together after a show and talk about whatever, ask mm-hmm. questions, just chill, hang out. So be on the lookout over on Patreon. Well, I already sent it out. It's yeah. the link to the video chat for that. So that'll be for all of the was it $25 tiered up people, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's the way Something it works. like that. It's on Patreon. You can check it out if you want to join us. But we will be headed over there tonight. There will be no after show tonight because we are doing the monthly live hangout. So yeah. whew, I think that's all the admin stuff. Okay, we well, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this bad boy then. Well, one of the things that, that we had talked about a couple episodes back was that, Zach, I think you had mentioned the fact that like, you always just you get a lot of turd comments, right? People that are just like blasting you, just being rude for the sake of being rude, right? I would say, I want to say like fifty percent of my comments. Fifty, yeah, it's it's actually surprisingly high. I don't know, maybe I'm just a very unlikable person, which I yeah. understand, yeah, uh, to a large degree. Right. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Scroll through my comments. There's a lot of a lot of mean stuff, and maybe I just I. Maybe it's not actually that bad, and I just kind of you only notice the mean stuff, but yeah, I don't know. But I mean, and one like your videos are out, and this is a compliment. They're outperforming your channel. 
recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm reaching a wider audience than just people who are subscribed to me. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that that's fantastic. But with that means that your stuff's getting shown to a yes. totally new audience. And when people do that, they don't know you. So yeah. they're like, oh, who is this guy? I'm going to blast them in the comments, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, you know, the, the, as a creator, that's a like it's a sign of success when you start getting hateful comments. It's like counterintuitive, but it just means that you are reaching beyond, you know, your kind of your own tribe or the people who watch your videos on a regular basis. So that definitely does help. Like seeing those comments like, well, I, you know, it's like I'm getting out there, even yeah. though it's people saying mean things. But whatever. something's going well if you're just getting repeatedly blasted. <laughs> yeah. Which doesn't, like you said, doesn't make sense, but yeah, it's the reality. Look, there, and there are nice comments in there too. And, you know, those people are the people who you kind of filter out and they become your subscribers and they become part of your tribe, so right. to speak, right? So, right. right. Yeah. But because it's the holiday season and we don't want to dwell on negativity, mm -hmm. one of the things that we had talked about was when you first start a channel, no one's watching your stuff. And you might get like one or two comments on a video. And if you get something negative, it might just completely derail you. And you're like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. So yeah, we challenged ourselves and all of you guys to go on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. Find a small creator and just leave a nice comment. Like something like very encouraging, you know, and, and, Give back, try to give, try to encourage people to do kind of this kind of thing. So, I found one that I want to share, and I know oh, I'm throwing okay. you guys on the spot. So, I don't, if you haven't done it yet, it doesn't matter. But okay, <laughs> I found one that I wanted to share today. The channel was uh, Barber Instagram or YouTube, uh, YouTube, it was on YouTube. Okay, okay. it's called What's Barber yeah. Paddock or Barbers B A R B E R apostrophe s paddock p-a-d-d-o-c-k woodworking oh, yeah. the channels got about five thousand subs and the video that i saw that popped up was a video it was basically how they how he had used like um uh using lasers to create like inside of drawer boxes basically mm -hmm. just like bang out like small little cubbies that are like super modular and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was a really interesting like organization hack. And when I first saw this video, I was like, Oh, this is pretty good. This guy's probably got to have a pretty big channel. And I got 5,000 subs and like the, yeah. the editing was fantastic. The voice looking, was crystal clear. It was fantastic. I'm looking at it. Even his thumbnails are actually, well, not, <laughs> I sound surprised there, but his, his thumbnails are quite good. <laughs> They're very clear and like mm -hmm. it, you get a sense of what he's trying to show in every video, which is something that I feel like a lot of early on YouTubers, uh, they make a mistake there. He's only been at it for a year. So right, he's, he's posted a, a lot. lot for like, a year. Yeah. yeah. Like how many videos is this? 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 30 videos in a year. That's impressive. Sounds like what I was doing, but he's got way more subs than I did at that point. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Week. Yeah. Right. Right. But yeah, definitely a, pr a pretty cool channel. I'm I'm interested to to pop in and and see what other stuff they've got. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Are we subscribing as a podcast? Sure. Oh yeah. Let's get a okay. subscription. Subscribed. Subscribe. <sighs> Look at that. Now, did you leave a comment? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which on on that one about the uh, the laser cut drawers? I believe so. And I don't know. I checked out uh, several of the other ones. Too. But it was it was interesting. I yeah. was just like this. It's a, it was a clever idea. It was very well crafted. Um, yeah, and that was. I thought the channel was pretty cool. This is a great channel. I got, I'm actually going to watch that video because I'm thinking about getting a laser myself. Because you know, you know, I need laser. more <laughs> tools to do woodworking that's not actually real woodworking. Yeah, you got a CNC. Yeah, you've got a 3D printer. So why not go for the trifecta? What's the next thing that's going to piss people off? It's the laser. laser. It's always the laser. You can't build your robot army without a laser. That's right. That's right. So after you get a laser, what, what could piss people off even more after that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, plasma CNC. 
Plaza. <laughs> yeah. Water jet. Oh, yeah. Have yeah, you ever yeah. seen one of those water jets that'll cut through like half inch plate steel? I'm pretty sure I saw one yeah. when I was with Jay at Woodpeckers. I think it was Ooh. a water jet. Cool. Cool. There's a there's a YouTube channel. I can't remember the name of the guy's channel now. It's a pretty big channel. And he has a water jet that's just massive. Um, damn, I can't remember the name of his channel. He's he's one of these guys who only posts like five times a year. But what he does, it's like a big epic. Was it me? <laughs> you post like you posted like five times this month. So <laughs> let me uh, see if I can pull it up. No, you'll see if you can find it. Well, Derek, I'll, I'll turn this one your way. Did you run across any small channels that you wanted to highlight for the holiday give back season? No, I got to be honest. I was super busy this week and this I had been online that much. <laughs> I did go looking uh, the other night, just in my free time. I started scrolling through Instagram looking for something. Everything that kept coming across my feed had like a million or like a couple hundred thousand followers. I was like, that's not going to work. You know what? what? Yeah, so this is actually a more challenging question or task than you would yeah. initially think because the best discovery happens for the bigger channels, right? right. They, they know how to make a killer video, so the algorithm pumps them out more. Right. So how did you end up finding this barber guy? It was actually on the YouTube homepage, which is something I don't... Oh don't use it did take me a little while because i found some interesting ones and then i was like okay they have a check mark next to their name they've got a big channel i was trying to find one that didn't have a check mark in it that was actually something i was interested in watching yeah not just some random nonsense of me being like oh small channel cool i'll just pick this one i was like oh this is pretty neat this is a neat idea I will say on YouTube on my feed, because I go through the suggested feed a lot, yeah. it does suggest uh, channels that are smaller to me more I often have than this. anywhere else. I was actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Derek, because I've been wanting to talk about this. I continuously get served videos that have like 300 views. Me too. In my mm. recommended thing. And I was like, is that a tweak that YouTube's making in order to promote smaller creators? And if so, like, good on them. That's awesome. Yeah. I was curious if it had to deal with the size of our channels. But, I mean, Derek, if, if you're seeing that as well on your end, yeah. that... Oh, interesting. It's, it's not oh. necessarily correlated. Yeah, I so I have two accounts. I use my Zach Builds one now more, but I used to have a personal one that I just yeah. used. It. And I, I've noticed the same thing on both. Hmm. But that's an interesting theory that it's like showing us smaller creators. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. So I, I'll be honest. I did not do the assignment. <laughs> These guys. This is like the I green know. suitors podcast out here. <laughs> but, but before we got on the air, I was researching, uh, doing a little research for my next project. I put out the PS2 video. That's going pretty well. Um, yeah, it is. And a lot of people were requesting the PS3 video, so I was like doing a little research, and I stumbled across this guy's channel. So his his channel is called NSC Mods, and he does some really wild, over the top modifications to old video game consoles. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I haven't left a nice comment for him yet, but it seems like a good yeah. There you go. Interesting. Got it all pulled up. So he's got a fully water cooled. PS3 that I thought would make for a fun future project. So I wanted, to, I was going to watch his video and see how he did it. I mean, how, how many uh, subs is this guy? What's the channel size? Uh, 29,000. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. still a good size channel. Yeah. And he's yeah. got some bangers too. He's got some videos that are half a million views. He's been at it for a long time, seven years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those video game videos get a lot of views. Yeah. Well, it turns out people have a lot of nostalgic feelings, myself included, mm. wrapped up in old games. Yeah. And, and hell, nerds don't like to leave their home, so YouTube is the first place to go. Hell yeah. <laughs> I can attest to that personally. So can you imagine, though, if like how well these videos are doing for you? 
if you if like I don't know I don't know anything about imagine this I was stuff. actually good at making videos I know <laughs> like imagine if you had like a product like you're like oh this is the Zach builds fan I'm gonna put the Zach builds fan in this thing oh that and, would be fun and now everyone's gonna be like well damn I need yeah. to get that Zach builds fan that's true that'd be fun oh I'm, yeah maybe I'll start approaching a bunch of different companies seeing if they want to partner up have you a bit of an all seriousness. Have you ever considered going about making a product the I have. same so, way people do where you basically are just white labeling something? So like yeah. you take a fan and then you just print Zach Builds on it and you're like, this is my Zach Builds fan. That's true. That's true. I should look into some white label goods and see what's out there. I feel like you had to spend a lot of time sifting through crap because I'm not going to put yeah. my name on a fan that's you know loud and doesn't move much air and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's no, it's a good idea. But just do like what Cam from Blacktail did. Yeah. Carbon sure. method is whatever his thing. It's the same product, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah definitely. Comes from the same factory. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I to mean, imagine yeah. it's the same product. He just yeah, they just slap that. a different label on it and he sells it to his audience. It's yeah, it's an interesting channel. I would, right. yeah, I'd love to try something like that. And then there's no fulfillment either. Mm -hmm. Which is big. I was actually thinking in a similar vein of hiring a graphic designer to make some cool t-shirts that were kind of like woodworking and tech themed. I've thought of the exact same thing because, oh, we'll get into this later. My new okay. website's finally up. Ooh, and I'm like, out of beta. Or, yeah, 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 it's up there. Um, it's up now. And so I'm like, Ooh, I want to like have video right at the merch. Start. Yeah. Woodworking like, simplified. Yeah, that's, I couldn't think very... of anything words to throw up there. Uh, that's a that's a very high quality video to be playing in a banner like it loaded instantly it's 4k yeah yeah crazy that looks awesome it it, it definitely does soften it i think miranda was right yeah that it was gives... this is 100 percent miranda's yeah. idea she yeah. goes did i click on something and i'm like what do you mean she goes well i just i went onto your website and then you're instantly like trying to sell me some she's like this seems kind of abrasive yeah and i was like, yeah. I, didn't even think about that. Yeah, you softened it. And I liked it. It's got a lot of you in it, too. Like, it's, you know, there's just, like, goofy moments you wave into the camera and stuff. Yeah. And I should I should yeah. also say that what Derek just found on the website, I whipped <laughs> up a quick thing in Photoshop. And we have a new T-shirt. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, it says, did... only you can prevent the Green Suitors podcast. <laughs> Is this AI generated? Uh, partially. Because it looks awesome. Yeah. It doesn't look bad, huh? Yeah, that looks great. Only you can prevent the Green Series podcast available on all streaming platforms. Well, look, if this doesn't fly off the shelves, I don't know what will. <laughs> I know. Get, uh, get for a loved one, pick it up this holiday season. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, got hats, got t-shirts, got all kinds of stuff on there. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. So oh, I'm going to get an off-the-cut hat made. I need a new hat anyways. All mine are gross. Covered in sawdust, so. Oh man, that's that's how this one is. Like this one I've got now, it's got paint and all kinds of stuff on it. Like what? Oh, those are the I best. Was, when I was first starting out as a content creator, one of the first things you get in terms of like perks is you just get swag kind of showing up to your house mm -hmm. on a pretty consistent basis, right? So get that I've firm got grip like, hat. Exactly. I've got firm grip hats. I've got gator sandpaper hats and stuff like that. Once you get to a certain point, that stuff stops. I, I know. Gotten, I haven't gotten anything that's like, you know, I, I mean, I'm spoiled here because, you know, tools and stuff show up in the mail, but I haven't right. gotten any <laughs> like beer koozies or hats or t-shirts in a while. I know. I like the, the free t-shirts are nice because they're usually really soft and yep. I would wear them while I would like paint and stuff. So I'm like, ah, oh, if I get it ruined, like, ah, oh, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Just get rid of it. But yeah. 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 So new website is up. Awesome. That whole saga is finally over. And I can focus on things that actually uh, mat well, I this the website matters, but like mm -hmm. I can actually proceed forward on doing all of these other mm -hmm. things I mm -hmm. want to do now. I just noticed two things on your website that I would like to address real quickly. Please. I didn't realize that you named all of your your designs. You got the Cody coffee table, the Eleanor dining table. How do you pick the names? I, to be honest with you, like 
So the Eleanor dining table, that's our cat's name is Eleanor. And she always okay. sits at the table while we eat dinner. Uh, like literally, okay. we like pull her chair out. She sits in the chair and just like puts her paws up on the table and just watches us eat. That's hilarious. So we're like, this is basically her dining table. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then sometimes the names are like for who it was made for. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because not only yeah. does it seem like it has a name, but I could be like, oh, it was that, you know, the table I made for Cody or like, you know, whatever. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I thought I was like Cody Coffee Table. I was like, maybe you just did it because it's a fun alliteration. No, no, yeah. no. Okay, it just okay. helps me remember rather than just calling it Walnut Dining Table. Like, okay, at some point I'm going to have like six of those and I'm not going to remember which one it was, right? Good point, good point. Yeah. Uh, and then the other question I have for you is in this video that's playing on screen right now, maybe we're going to see it in a second. Oh, yeah. The uh, yeah. entertainment center thing. Well, the... It is the entertainment center, but I'm actually more curious about how you got a flashlight to stick to your switch like that. There's like a flashlight randomly suspended on the wall next to the the light switch. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'll have to, I I don't think it's a flashlight. It, it's it a, really uh, looked like a flashlight. Oh no, it probably was a flashlight. Oh, it was probably like on a string. Oh. Hold on, it's coming. It's coming. Okay, it's coming. Hold on. Oh, it's just out of frame. No, it's like it's on top of that light switch there. And now we'll So that's where it. we have this little like mail thing that holds like letters and keys and stuff oh, like that. Oh, it's dangling. And, like, so it's probably on a string. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how long do you think it's going to be before I get an email? Somebody's like, "Hey, so I was looking at the uh the video on your homepage, and it looks like you got this big media console. Did you did you put the video of that out?" And I'm going to be like, "No." <laughs> Made that a year ago. It's still not out yet. <laughs> Was it really a year? I thought you were working on it in the summertime. Uh, I can tell you when I opened it. Uh, let's see. A and that, that video is completely oh. done, right? You're just waiting for a sponsor? Yeah. It says April 6th was when I created it. Okay. okay. So that's not yeah. too bad. Well, no. still eight months. But, Seven months. Yeah. <clears throat> so website is up. That was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. But you got it done. Did you modify the back end? Did you go in and like do it all yourself? Or oh, you yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And let me just say, from going from Shopify, or I'm going from Squarespace to going to Shopify. Yeah. Shopify is, if, how should I say this? If you're looking to sell anything, do not waste your time on Squarespace. Right. It's not their e-commerce stuff is all kind of feels like a tacked on extra. Oh, it's so antiquated. Yeah, they start well, they started out as like a website, you know, I don't know, create websites for photographers and stuff like that. Where right. web your website was meant to be more of a portfolio. And then I feel right. like all the e-commerce stuff, they kind of got uh, feedback from people and they're like, we should start tacking on some e-commerce stuff. And it feels very tacked on. Whereas yeah. Shopify is built from the ground up to be right. an e-commerce platform. If you're somebody like, so like that's a great, great way to say it. If you're looking to just post tons and tons of photos and like make it a, a portfolio. Yes. Squarespace is going to be easier. If you're looking to sell stuff, Shopify is a thousand times easier. However, Shopify does actually make it more challenging to upload assets. And what I mean by assets are like photos, videos um, that are not products. So like if you just want to have like grids of like your projects that you've made, but you're not selling any of them. Yeah. It's much more difficult to do that. You would have to go and get like basically like apps or add-ons or plugins gotcha. to do that. Um, gotcha. But uh, the, really, the intent of my website is is to drive sales yeah. and you know sell things. So yeah. that's what I'm cool. going for with Shopify. Sure. I, I've abandoned the whole blog idea. Yeah, blogs are kind of going the way of the dodo. I think I just Man. don't. I have no interest in doing it. How many blogs do you personally read? None. I used to read a bunch back in the day. You know, 10 years ago, I had oh, like, really? I would sit down on my computer and I had 
I don't know, five, six blogs that I would check every day. Right. And now I never do that anymore. So, yeah. So yeah. in summary, if you just want to post photos and make it like a portfolio, Squarespace is great. If you're looking to sell anything, especially, especially physical products, or you need to calculate sales tax. Oh, yeah. Do not use Squarespace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the Squarespace's thing that like calculates sales tax? It's called Tax Jar. Okay. And it will charge you like several hundred dollars a month to calculate uh, sales tax. Wow. I guess they their feeling is that if you were making enough money where you have to be collecting sales tax, you must have a pretty big store. And Right. Yeah. Right. But... So far, Shopify has been excellent. Um, the only thing that took a little time was obviously the whole setting up Shopify and that the yeah. people that I hired effed it up royally. Um, <laughs> but like transferring my domains and servers and stuff like that was a little bit of a pain because I get that it's not instant. Like you have this like 12 to 24 hour period where like you change it. So people were like, Hey, I'm going to your website and nothing's happening. I'm like, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. It's like I submitted the new one and like, it's going to take a minute for all that to sync and stuff. And so, yeah, working. I hear that. you. I hear you. Ugh. So who does your uh, fulfillment on the physical items? Uh, I don't have, Oh, like merch. They're all drop ship. Yeah. I think, right? It's, it's yeah, drop, drop shipping. shipping. Is it yeah. spring or? It's one of those. I don't remember which one it is. Isn't that funny? You just redid your website and you don't, it's like, it's so <laughs> simplified and streamlined. You don't even know who does it because you don't really even have to interact with it anymore. Right. Honestly, the, the merch isn't even a, it's not even a money maker. Like yeah. if I wanted to make money on it, I would charge, I would charge like $38 for a t-shirt. I'm pretty well, sure I make your, like six bucks on a t-shirt or eight dollars on a t-shirt. Well, your t-shirts right now, maybe it's doing automatic conversion to Canadian for me, but they cost $36 on my screen right now. Yeah, it automatically converts it. Okay, okay. So that's why. So mine's 27, 26 or 27 US. Uh, interesting, interesting. Cool. Shopify, baby. Yeah, Shopify is great. They're not a sponsor yet, but I'm trying to get them as one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They do they do a lot of YouTube advertising, so I heard they have deep pockets too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well they may they basically have a license to print money. Every store that's on the internet is basically giving them, you know, one percent of their revenue or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah. The nice thing is it's just they have an endless like market, like an app store yeah. for things to add on. So I was like, yeah. oh, what is this? Yeah, what is Did that? Did you just see that? Yeah, I saw that. Was that you, Derek? No. <laughs> what just I put my I put my Oh, dude. Yeah, this is, is like this? They were talking about that on Shop Sounds this week too. Like that that happened with um I think it's a Mac thing. It must be a Mac thing. It must 100% so, be a Mac thing. For everybody listening, I put my thumbs up and now this like thumbs up bubble comes up. Now <laughs> if I do a thumbs down, uh oh, oh what is what this? You do you do like this? What if I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. 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 Peace. I get a piece. No. Hold oh. on, hold on. What about what about this is one though, right? Yeah. Or just the horns. Do do okay, do peace? Peace. Make it balloons. Yeah. Oh, I got balloons. Yeah, okay. okay, now do a heart. Do a heart. <laughs> oh my god, this is nuts. This is terrible. For, for, so I guess people listening to the podcast, there's I just updated my computer like an hour or two ago. And now when oh. I make gestures at the camera, it's emojis and like stuff screen. pop up. Give me give me one last one. Give me the double bull horns. Double bull horns? What's this one? Oh, oh my now god. I got lasers and smoke going on. <laughs> Man, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. Ah, I forgot what I was even talking about. It doesn't matter. But yeah, Shopify's been great. Um I also bought a bunch of other domains. So oh, like, yeah. I got the podcast.com. No, oh, I should buy that. <laughs> I got like the dot co, the dot net, yeah. the Spensley D Sing. Yeah, 
Co. Common misspellings. Com, common misspellings. Yeah. And it's like, it's not bad. And then once I get them all set up, I'm actually going to redirect them. So if somebody mistypes it, it redirects them to my website and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just working on some of that kind of stuff. I mean, honestly, am I really a big target for somebody to try to steal and impersonate my domain? Probably no, not, but so. you never know. You never know. I, I had know. one of those um, YouTube bots or scammers scamming my audience again. I didn't do any giveaway posts or anything like that. He just started messaging people in my comments section saying, hey, message me on Telegram. I've got like a free... I don't know, PS5 or something for you. So I was getting all these emails and DMs on Instagram, like, hey, where's my PlayStation 5? Jesus, people are so I stupid. Know. I know. Did you go in your YouTube settings and like put Telegram as a banned word? Oh, no, I didn't do that. We even talked about doing that on yeah. the podcast. I yeah. did that, and since I had that, I have had no one email. Okay, okay. Kind of stuff. All right, I got to... Uh, I could maybe even try and do that right now if I can. <laughs> maybe, maybe even the word giveaway or prize. Yeah, I would. Yeah, too. yeah. Anyways, but yeah. Annoying. Well, speaking of giveaways, uh, I I did my giveaway for in the last one of the videos I put out the like the ten tools I recommend or whatever. Okay, yeah. I did like an embedded giveaway of like I just kept randomly talking about something and gesturing at something like I was actually talking about it. I was like. Well, if you're actually paying attention, there's a link that says like flamingo feathers or something. Go in the go in the description, click on that, and you can enter a giveaway or whatever. Mm -hmm. I picked the winner like a day or two ago. Mm -hmm. Person never responded. So, like, oh, how long do I wait for the person? Great question. Great question. Yeah. I feel like you give them oh, like a week. Yeah, I'd say a week is pretty fair. So I'm curious to know how this person gets notified that they've won. So on Gleam, which is the, the Gleam.io service, again, something we're not sponsored by. I paid for it myself. Yeah. Oh, you um, have to pay for it. I mean, I guess that makes sense. So you, it's free, but I paid 50 bucks for a one-month subscription because then you can add tons of other features and you can, the whole reason people do giveaways, sorry, guys, is to get access to everyone's email to build up yeah. your email list. Yeah. Um, if that you do the free it. version, you only get the email of the winner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I got good. like 8,000 emails for wow, 50 crazy. bucks. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, so let me... Oh, I had a question. Now it's... Are you going to continue to keep up your Gleam subscription or are you oh, going no, to... It. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just, honestly, I'll just pay fifty bucks uh, whenever I want to do, do do another one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do twelve a year. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so you basically go on there and then you you like pick a winner and then it goes like, boom, here's your winner. Oh, and okay, then, yeah. So the reason I asked is like, is it possible that this person has gotten a notification from Gleam, but because Gleam is such a high volume emailer maybe it went into their spam folder no it says on gleam that they do not contact the winner for me i have to contact them oh so you sent them an email yeah okay so maybe worth sending like from a your personal account or something like that just in case yeah i sent it from my eric at spenceleydesignco.com which i think is the most the least yeah. likely to be impersonated and it looks the yeah. most legit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So I mean, if they got you going to spam, that's on them. Yeah. Right. So what do you think? I, I, I wait a week and then if I don't hear back from I just draw another winner? I think so. I would give them a good solid week. Yeah. A week, two at the most. Especially and then maybe holiday time. Like I get it. Yeah. Might be on vacation, might be out of town or something. And then if you do another one in the future, maybe put a bullet point at the bottom, you know, notification will come out. If you don't respond within so long, then a new oh, drawing yeah. is made. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. Good call. Yeah, definitely. Because hey, it's, it's not like I expect today. that you respond within like a couple hours. Like I get it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You gave away one of those battery bank things, right? Uh, no, I gave away. Well, I did do a, one of those battery bank giveaways. Oh, that was on Instagram. Yeah. Hey, that ended up going to someone in 
like Utah or Arizona or something. That's cool. So maybe they're like a camper. Or they, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay. No, the one I did on YouTube was just for a pair of like, uh, like Bluetooth hearing protection. Oh, cool. Isotunes. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it was one of the other brands that I that I work with, Elgin, Elgin. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. They send it. They it's like every month they just send like a like a couple of their products to me. I don't know why, but whenever I like go to places, like if they have like little woodworking get togethers or shows or whatever in Columbus, I just take them and I just give them the people. Yeah, that's smart. So it's like it doesn't cost me anything other than shipping. Like, yeah, I'm just happy to do it. And the, right around the holiday time, who's not down for a hundred and fifty dollar pair of free headphones? It's pretty cool. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, so I saw you also released a new video. Actually, both of you guys released new videos recently. So I want to talk to both of you about that. Uh, but Eric, I had a question for you about the thumbnail of your latest video. So many people did. Yes. So super close up shot of your finger. I had it up on my TV downstairs. Sophie walked by and she was like, what's up with his fingernail? (laughs) So I wanted to know. Did you Photoshop oh, yeah. that to make it more noticeable, or do you no. just have a, a kind of screwy fingernail? That's so, so that I, I did this on purpose. I was like, so this table, this video is all about how I got rid of my table saw and like kind of like the yeah. evolution of like how you know I started with this saw or whatever and like why I upgraded and whatnot. And I was like, how do I make an interesting thumbnail? And I was like, well, table saws are like a hot button topic for people, mm-hmm. so. I'm going to take a really, really close up zoomed in photo yep. of the table saw. And I'm just going to like point to the blade. Yeah. Smart. Oops. It's like, it's, you feel something as soon as you look at that. Like there's like a visceral feeling. It's like, Oh, finger should yeah. not touch blade. Right. Right. That, and that was what I was kind of going for. And then when I yeah. went to go edit the photos, I was like, Oh man, I usually, whenever I try to point, I try to point with my, my right finger or my right hand. Because my left hand is the one that I drilled into a couple years uh, ago. Uh, and okay, so the okay. fingernail is like, it grows in like crooked and like funky. It just like doesn't grow. Like, so like, let's see. Oh, yeah. It yeah. grows in like that. Like, you can clearly see where I drilled into my finger. So for all the kids at home who are listening, if you I got screw like a up solid your, 45, <laughs> if you screw up your fingernails, they just stay screwed up. They never, mm-hmm. they never heal. Yeah, which is super annoying. I have like a crease in one of my thumbnails from I don't know, I guess like hitting it with a hammer or something like that. And this crease has just stayed in my thumbnail for my yeah. entire life. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Yeah. I had a splinter go up underneath my thumbnail, and it went all the way to the bed, you know, the white, the quill, the white part in the back. Ooh. And there was just this little black line that that lived there for about a year as it slowly yeah. grew out with my fingernail. Yeah. Oh. I had a, I had this brown spot on the inside of my, one of my fingers for years. And I just assumed, I was like, oh, I guess I have like a little mole on my finger, like no big deal. Right. And then one day I was like kind of picking at it a little bit. It's like, wait a minute, that's a piece of wood. So I like grabbed a pair of tweezers and I got it out of there, but uh-huh. the skin had just grown over it. And there was just a little piece of wood stuck in my, in between my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. No, you got to hold it up. There you oh, go. Oh, there we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Good laser beams going. I have in between the webbing of my fingers. I don't well, come in on camera. You can see a teeny yeah. tiny dot. Yeah. yeah, I think I see that. I got stabbed with a pencil Ooh. by a girl named Adriana Wheeler. I still remember okay. her name in like first yeah. or second grade. And the, the piece of lead is just like in between my fingers now. Oh, it's still in there. Well, I guess uh, our... Um... I think that's the way a lot of tattoos work, like early tattoos. Could be. Yeah, it's like, know. yeah, it's like pig. Well, it's just pigment that gets below your skin and gets stuck there, right? So, yeah, yeah. embedded yeah. between the layers of epidermis. Well, Eric, yeah. if you ever want to get that out of there, you just get yourself a pair of tweezers and you hack just away at it like a meth addict. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, you'll get it out of there. That's maybe I'll I'll save that for another thumbnail. Yes. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but so so next time you get them. Make- the blade blurry for the next round whenever you do the A B testing. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Blur out the blade a little yeah, bit. Yeah, make it look like it's moving. There's all sorts yeah. of filters where you can apply fake movement to things. Yeah. That was a lot of effort. um 
I've noticed that you've had you haven't A/B tested that thumbnail, so is it working quite well for you? No, I did. Oh, so I have access to the YouTube A/B testing for thumbnails now, so it'll actually do it live. It doesn't. Uh, you don't have to wait day to day. So this one it performed. It had like a seven percent <laughs> higher watch time okay. than the other one, so I'm just gonna leave this one here. And what's it at? It's at like, is it sixty or last something? 60. Yeah, last sixty. Time in like okay. a couple oh, days, okay. like I'm, nice. I'm thrilled with that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. The long video too. So I found that long videos tend to live like a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. What's the what's the average view duration on that bad boy? It's like it forty like... or thirty or forty percent. Okay, okay. And for again for a long video, but that's in minutes. That's got to be like fifteen minutes or something. Yeah, Crazy. it's it's up in the high teens for sure. Yeah, it's not bad. But yeah. I've got messages from people. They're like. That's not a thumbnail. And I'm like, you're right. It's a fingernail. <laughs> fingernail. Nice. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I mean, it seems like the video. I didn't think this video was going to do anything. It was originally like 50 minutes. And then I was just like, I'm going to cut out so much of this stuff and just like yeah. zoom through a bunch of stuff. But people love hearing about why you got a tool. And so that's basically just what I wanted to try to do. So. Yeah, it moved. I gotta say, it moved. I, I thought I looked. I thought I saw thirty six minutes, and I thought, well, this is gonna be a long one. I'll sit down and strap in, but it moved along pretty good pace. Yeah, That's I was trying I, to pace it. So, for everybody out there who's making YouTube videos, you if you start with a really long video that has just a bunch of stuff happening, and then you just hack away at it, yeah. hack away at it, hack away at it, that video will. Point will do well. Like that's, you know, if, if you can condense a whole bunch of stuff into a short amount of time, that really captures people's attention without losing the key moments. Right. Yes. Yeah. But I make choices all the time. Like, uh, do I want to keep this little bit or, you know, is this really important to the story? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you kind can of, the audience, you can, yeah. You can get to decide if the audience can be from A to B. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's really important to our story? Our patrons? Our patrons. Yeah. And we got a new patron this week. Ooh. Mitchell Kraut Kramer. Kraut Kramer? One more? Hyphenated? Kraut Kramer. wonder if he's related to Cosmo Kramer. <laughs> he's his German cousin. No, oh, could be. <laughs> our Kraut Kramer. But... So thanks, Mitchell, for joining and supporting the show and uh, aiding in the fight against the Green Suitors podcast, the worst oh, yeah. podcast on Apple and Spotify. Um, but returning this week are our top tier patrons. We've got Dan Armendarez. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that. I need to stop fumbling on it. We've got Luke Schmidt, Chris from Black Forest Creations, Josh at Freedom Workshop, and Corey Duvall. I guess Dadu's on there, but he hasn't figured out how to use his bank card yet. So <laughs> he got kicked off, or he, he, the bank declined it, or something. I don't know. There's yeah, apparently people yeah. have been having issues with Patreon. I've never had any issue. We aren't doing anything, so I don't know. Oh, Patreon's a nightmare. A nightmare. But <laughs> anyway, those are just some of the folks that are going to be joining us tonight for the live uh, video chat that we're going to do oh, yeah. every month. And IOC. You know, yeah, BYOC. Bring your own camera. And they also get access to the after show. They get entered to win that $50 gift card every single month and a bunch of other perks. But if you want to check those out, you can go over to patreon.com slash off the cut podcast. There it is. And so, Derek, you put out a video too. Yeah, let's talk about Derek's video. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I did a, a holiday video. Ooh. Um, I'm assuming that neither of you've watched it yet, which is fine. I just released it earlier today. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a uh, tax video. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I took the Christmas classic. Um, what is it called again? Uh, a visit from Santa. The mm -hmm. was the night before Christmas poem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I rewrote it as like a woodworker carpenter okay. and then just recited okay. that over some B roll. Okay. So just a fun little thing. It's like four minutes. Yeah. 
Okay, wait, hold on. I'm not gonna, so just based on that, I'm not even gonna look at the thumbnail or look at the title. Okay. Have you considered titling it something like I see th this is live, so it's not gonna be great. Something like <laughs> how like a woodworker's Christmas or like mm. the way w Christmas should be for woodworkers or something like that. Uh, yeah. It's Christmas uh, reimagined for woodworkers. It's a carpenter's Ooh. visit from Santa or from St. Nick or something like whatever the, okay. whatever the original title was, I slipped in a carpenter. I think just it's a carpenter's Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I see not, and I I pride myself in knowing a lot of Christmas, you know, ditties and tunes. I you had get, no you idea what you're getting at with that one. You get along very well with Sophie. She is all about the Christmas music. Oh, baby, day after <laughs> day after Halloween, Christmas music is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Might I make a holiday request or a uh, suggestion to anyone mm -hmm. out there? Um, sure. You might have you might have heard of this uh, this fella. Um, hold on, let me uh, stand by. Okay. His a lot of people know him as Calvin uh, Cordozer Brodus Jr. Um, he's uh, more commonly known as uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, oh yeah. yes, yes, yes. He's yes. got a lovely album called uh, "Christmas in the Doghouse." Oh, uh, great. Great Christmas album. I don't know if I'd play it around your grandmother. I was going to say, I don't think... I'm starting to think that maybe you don't have a similar taste in Christmas music as Sophie. <laughs> uh, there's a why. new one that's fantastic. It's called Doggy Dog Christmas. <coughs> it's all about all of the food on Christmas and about the cheese. Fantastic song. Okay, I'll check it out. He, I can't believe he did a whole album. Wait, there's a Snoop yeah. Dogg with Boys to Men called Christmas in the Ghetto? Oh, oh I bet that's huh. good. I wonder how many units of this he sold. I don't know. It doesn't say. No, but... Excellent. God, he's got a big uh, catalog of music. Yeah, well, you know, he's been been in the game for a while. Been in the yeah, game. yeah. Crazy. So how's your video doing, Derek? I didn't even... So now I gotta see. Oh, it's like I think maybe a couple views, probably. Like I said, I, I hit publish on it at like three. So yeah. I don't plan. To, I got a comment earlier that I responded to. But other than that, I don't plan to um, look at it for at least 24 hours. Right. Right. I right. don't want to drive myself crazy. Yes. Do you guys do this? Do you play this game with yourself where like when a video comes out, will you? I, when I, whenever I publish a video, I will like not look at it for like two or three days. Cause I'm just like nervous to see how it did. <laughs> oh dude. I check it like every five minutes for the first hour. Really? Eh? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh no, it's nine out of 10. And I'm like, you gotta, you gotta change something. <laughs> Cause like when I, so I put out a video while I was in London and then I just didn't check it until I got home. And like, I, I think it was even like the day after I got home because I was just too nervous. Yeah. 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 So well, I, I mean, honestly, that's kind of how I felt about this last video. I was like, I don't think this is going to do well. And I'm like, oh, number two yeah. of 10. Okay. There okay. You go. Yeah. So, yeah, it's always nice when you play that game with yourself and then you're pleasantly surprised yeah. by the results when you actually look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my channel came from well, I'm I'm I guess I'm closer to to zero than the two of you, so I'm closer to that. You don't want to look at it in the beginning because there's probably not going to be anything for at least the first 24 hours. Yeah, it's hard to get traction, especially early yeah. on, right? You don't have enough data. You're like, oh, it's number 10 yeah. out of 10, but it's like, oh, I have seven views. Yeah, I, I, or I have seven videos total. <laughs> it's ten of ten of seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I put out my first like five or ten youtube videos it'd be like a couple days i'm like oh first view right on Dude, right oh. yeah hell yeah let's go one view You're like this one got 10 yeah average duration one tenth of a second i was like <laughs> we're getting places we're getting places oh. i'll never forget how frustrating it was to start a channel yeah oh, what God. was the most frustrating part everything it's just literally <laughs> everything jumping 
hundreds of hours into stuff that nobody watches and doesn't it doesn't move you forward in the direction you want to go at all no no um yeah i think honestly i think managing my own emotions around poor performing videos was the hardest part yeah it's like just mm -hmm. not letting it discourage you and trying to just keep that mindset it's i think actually maybe one of the hardest things about it was that you put a video out and it's 10 out of 10 it sucks. It's a stinker. And you don't really know why. Yeah. Like it took me a while to kind of figure out the framework to properly assess why certain videos did better than others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that was, I think that was the most frustrating thing is because you put like, you don't have much data to go on. You have, even if you're you know very prolific in your first year you do 30 videos 30 data points isn't really that much to no. yeah to kind of formulate a theory on so you're like my videos aren't performing well that's frustrating and not only that but i don't know why they're not performing well and i'm losing money <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hemorrhaging yeah. money doing this. I'm I'm spending money to do these things. I'm spending my own time, and I just and don't the people know why that I suck. And the people that host the game keep changing the rules and yeah, moving the goalposts. That too. That too. Yeah. Uh, I'm so I don't ever want to restart a channel. Well, <laughs> now I feel like I could do it better, obviously, because I know all the yeah. things that I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh. It would still suck, but I, I I honestly don't know that there's really much advantage to having a lot of subs like I think I could get back to the position I'm at now relatively quickly if I lost my channel tomorrow. Oh yeah, because I know like I I, I a mean, year or two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Post a couple N64 videos. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, right? But like, but it took me three years or whatever to learn that Nintendo yeah. 64 videos perform well. <laughs> but it, but you're going after what you were interested in. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You just figured out how to get other people interested in it as well. Yeah, which is or, not necessarily always the easiest thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, speaking of losing channels, I remember a while back, Eric, you lost your Instagram account and then you started that backup Instagram account. Do you still oh, keep yeah. up with that now that you're verified or is that just gone away? Oh, I don't even know. I yes. think I still have it. I never deleted it, <laughs> but you don't, but you don't post it. it anymore. Yeah. No, no, it's a waste yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. I had one of those, uh, success calls with, a a rep from meta. How oh. much of a waste of time was that? A pretty big, pretty big waste of time. They hit me up all the time. They're like, we'd love to chat with you. And I, and I just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I've seen a couple people post videos about the same phone call and yeah. they all ha hit the same notes. They, they get yeah. the same information and they're, they ask basically the same questions and they're given basically the same answers. It's just, yeah. do you post crazy. reels? Yeah. Well, yeah. how often do you post them? Once or twice a day. Oh, okay. Do you use training audio? Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, well, yeah, just keep doing that. Yeah. Like, use right. and be sure to use our editing software. No, no, yeah. absolutely. The, the guy also told me, he was like, you should really start a broadcast channel. Yeah. And then how was a broadcast channel? I, I did. I Another way to annoy your followers. Well, that's the thing. His advice to me was to every time you post, let everybody know on the broadcast channel and tell them to go interact with the post. I would murder you if you invited me. To, I yeah. would leave that thing so fast. Yeah. He was like, you know, like these, he was kind of weird about it too. He was like, you know, like the people who are in your broadcast channel are going to be like your most diehard fans. So just tell them to do something and they're probably going to do it. And I was like, oh, that feels gross. Like, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It was very clear that this was just like a guy that was hired to do this job. To read a script. Like, right. Yeah, like he's just like, you know, some 22-year-old guy that he handed a script to off the street. And we're like, hey, call people and read the script to them. 
I mean, I had pretty much the exact same interaction when I did one of these YouTube partner success manager things. Right. The I did like one or two, and then I realized both of them were an absolute waste of time. The girl would constantly email me, and I would say, I, I'm going to respectfully decline from this because I did not gain any value from this. Yeah. And would hit me up multiple times a week. Hey, I have an opening. I'd love to talk to you about this. Again, wow. I'm respectfully declining this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Well, but whew. hey, I, I had a quick question, Derek. I noticed that you you had done some like fancy Christmas light stuff. Oh yeah. Th- so these are not like your standard like go to Target get these the strings of Christmas lights. Tell me about these things. Go be baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. I went online and um, my wife mentioned last year at the end of Christmas that she wanted to do permanent holiday lights, and we had talked about going with uh, some company called Jelly Lights. And, um, so this year we're getting closer and it's like October. So I start looking into it and the jelly lights are like thousands of dollars to have them come out and install these things. And then I came across the Govi lights, which are essentially the same thing. So and, these jelly lights, like not a DIY thing. You have to call, call the company basically. From what I've, the little bit that I gleaned and I read online, cause there wasn't a whole lot, um, they yeah you you hire them to come out and do it or you i think you can buy them but you have to go to their place to pick them up Um, like i don't think they deliver it it's like they deal with pros only type of thing so we found the i found the govi lights everybody was raving about them online which you know you take with a grain of salt um did a little more research on them and went ahead and pulled the trigger because they were like i could get the govi pros for i think it was like 600 and um install them myself and then wrap the whole house uh so i went ahead and ordered those up installed these groby lights on my house i mean you've seen what they they look pretty good they yeah, 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 I do multiple right. colors on them and then whenever christmas is over we're just going to turn the the brightness down on them to like yeah. one or two percent and just have them be these nice soft white accent lights yeah, that totally. run the whole house yeah huh. and then i got to most of it you know i just put up my ladder and i was able to get to most of it but we have a two-story house and then whenever i went to go do the second story it's like 30 30 35 feet up and my ladder goes to 22 feet so i ended up going to home depot and renting a bucket lift parking it in my driveway and riding the lift up to the roof line and attaching for the second floor huh. using that thing but they were they were a little tedious to get working at first because there's like a voltage, uh, there's like some voltage regulation going on. So oh, like right. after a certain yeah, so like after a certain length, they kind of like flicker unless oh, you have in their power in yeah yeah their extensions have these little like nodulars nodules on them around the the connections. And I think they either tell the main power supply to boost the, the signal because there's a, an extension or they themselves somehow boost the signal. And mm-hmm. um, it took me a while to kind of figure out where to put everything to get it to yeah. work right. But I got it working. It took me a couple of days, but it got working. So, nice. so, the, so it's like 200 bucks for 100 feet. Does of the... Well, um, well, it depends on if you go with the pro or the regulars. You can get the regulars. I want to say for a little under, th- I think right around three hundred, and it's like a hundred feet, okay. or four hundred for two hundred feet, something like that. Yeah. And yeah. then the the pro version um, are actually brighter, and they do true whites. They have five LEDs. They have a red, blue, green, and then they have two white LEDs. Whereas the regulars just have the red, blue, and green, and to go white, they just shine it all. Yeah. So you get a little more control over your whites if you go with the pro, and like I said, they're a little brighter, um, but they're more expensive. Nuts. Yeah. That's cool yeah. as hell. Yeah. yeah. Right. And let me just say, as somebody who would always like have helped my parents and stuff with Christmas lights and stuff, I'm like, dude, it's a whole day go. thing. Yeah. yeah. Just put them up once. Yeah, so I put them up now, and hopefully I won't have to do it for another, I'm hoping, like 10 years. Right, right, right. So you said like all in for, for a standard size home. You're just you're doing basically just like the roof line, right? Yeah. And it it'd probably like be bucks. four to 600, depending on if you wanted the 100 or... Because I did the 200, but I only end up using 
about a hundred feet of it. So really I could have right. got away with the hundred, but I couldn't find the hundred. I had to buy the 200 because uh, the hundred wasn't available until after I got my 200 and then I could find the hundred all day. So uh, how much are, are, are regular Christmas lights? Are they like 10, 15 bucks a box? Maybe, maybe yeah. that. it depends on which ones you want. Yeah. I want to say that we got just like GE's led ones a couple years ago sure well, you, the well, you find it like target or whatever yeah they were just like the short icicle ones of the right, right. go f- yeah and they were like 20 bucks a box and how long was the box how long like 12 feet probably 100 feet it was 100 feet it was either 50 or 100 feet i can't remember um, oh okay oh i took it downstairs i was gonna say i had one but i took it downstairs <laughs> see I, I don't i remember mine being much shorter than that like all these strands that you'd pull out of the box and have to connect all the strands together yeah. wow. well whenever they when they started going led they could make them longer so now they'll come in uh, like usually i think between 25 and 50 feet depending on which ones you get yeah. so ru- it's, it's roughly 10x the price to go with the gobies yeah yeah probably yeah. but, they're but then also think about what's your time worth right yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not poo pooing on it. What? Yeah. No. No. no, no I'm totally. Just trying to get a rough. If you're going to say, okay, you're going to spend roughly 10x the cost. You yeah. never have to take them down. Yeah. No. And it's going to be a much higher quality light. You yeah. can reprogram them. Do like. So can you do like by zones? Be like, okay, I want the first 12 LEDs to be blue, and the second four to be another zone. Like, can you do that? That's the other selling point of the pro versus the regular with the regulars. You can do that in groups of like, I think four, but if you mm-hmm. go with the pro, you can control each light individually right. and do a whole lot more with the programming. And then they've also got like other stuff that they, that the Govi brand sells to go on the outside of your house. Like they have a curtain of lights that'll display like an led image. If you want Get to sleep with that on top of your garage door. And then they've Get got like, it's a wrap on your, your trees and stuff like that. And then That's they got fun. a little box that you can put out there and it plays all the lights to music. So then Get it's out of town. Huh? So you have like a speaker right there blasting Christmas music. And then it makes all of your lights sync up with it. Yeah. Like I think it works through the app in your phone, but yeah, like that's, cool. it's kind of, it's kind of what it does. I need to get this stuff. Man, I could make my house like a like a mecca for people on hallucinogenic <laughs> drugs. <laughs> what you mean it isn't already? <laughs> <laughs> so like they can free like they can get covered in snow and like get rained on and stuff. Yeah, no I think problem. Pulled up pretty good. Yeah, that's, I think so. Yeah, that's nuts. So so how did you learn about these? Did you learn about them through YouTubers? Uh, yeah, actually, the first couple of videos I saw were on YouTube. I, st- I was just searching up uh, permanent outdoor Christmas lights DIY, and it was these. And there's like two other brands that are very similar, like uh, okay. U- Ufly, Ufy, or something like that. Was oh, another yeah. one. Yeah. And, oh, uh, not not the uh, brand that Zach was hawking that <laughs> they steal everybody's data or whatever. <laughs> Somebody got <laughs> mad at you for right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, funny. Well, that's funny. Yeah. But there's a few different ones. And then I think even like whenever I went on Amazon looking for them, there's like, uh, what do you call them? Like mm, other brands or whatever. Yeah. yeah know, a bunch of no, BS oh, no name brands. Yeah. I don't want to say knockoff, but yeah, no name brands. Yeah. The import brands or whatever. Yeah. Questionable integrity and, yeah. <laughs> and, and product quality, right? Yes. Yeah. So I after spend putting 600 the- here, 25 here. Right. After putting those up, are you like, why didn't I do permanent Christmas lights earlier? Uh, not, I mean, yes and no. I kind of, I, I, I would like to have, but I don't know that they existed in this. Like, I think this is the first year that these Gobies have come out. I don't know. Uh, they may have been out last year, but I don't think they're that old. I don't okay. Think they were around that long. That makes sense. I think this is a, a kind of a, within the last couple of years, this is a new thing, the permanent yeah. outdoor lights. At least for the average consumer, I know high end. I'm sure they've had because I know the jellyfish things have been around for I want to say like five or ten years. Huh. I, I know that like the malls around here tend to have them. 
Because they'll like yeah. do orange lights, you know, uh, above stores for like you know Halloween yeah. and like you know Fourth yeah. of July yeah. lights and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I didn't know that people did them residentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's, I guess uh, that's, new. that's the nice thing about doing this now is you know it's not just Christmas. You basically get every holiday you can set your things to. Yeah, so you're like, I'm yeah. looking forward to to launching it with different colors every holiday now. Yeah, you could do yeah, all totally. red and. Th- people would think it was like a brothel. <laughs> yeah. <true>. Get <laughs> some side income, time. Derek. <laughs> yeah. Come on down. <laughs> Derek's home. <laughs> well, speaking of brothels. On that note, yeah. <laughs> we probably yeah. got to head over to the uh, to the live chat with, uh, with to, the patrons tonight. To our brothel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, t- you guys got anything we want to add or you want to head over to the group group chat? No, thanks for joining us and we will see you guys next yeah. week. Uh, see you, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all those other holidays. Uh, Whatever cool. you happen to celebrate, I'm happy for you. We're here for you. Right. Yeah. Festivus. Festivus. Everyone else Even the made air your grievances. <laughs> uh, everybody, hey, seriously, we, we appreciate you listening. We're almost at episode 100. Which is an episode that Green Sewer said we would never get to. So we regretfully tell you 99 will be our last episode. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we're rolling in with a good head of steam. Yeah. And we got some guests coming up. Um, Yeah. We're not going to reveal them quite yet. We can reveal them on the group chat. Patrons can get first access to know what the guests are going to be. Hell yeah. Sweet. Everybody, have a great holiday season. Stay safe out there. Don't listen to the Green Suitors podcast. That's right. See ya. <laughs>